the team here, and we're ready to begin that 1.30 session. So I'm sure you can tell already that this is a troop of gorillas. These are all boys. They're young adolescent boys, and this is called a bachelor troop. So after these males have left their parents, they join these troops together to give them safety in numbers, but also to help them learn. Now what we're gonna get the chance to watch today is an opportunity for us at Lincoln Park Zoo and our scientists to learn more about them so we can provide better care. So the session will last maybe 10 to 12 minutes and it will give you a glimpse of some of the research that we do to learn more about their mind. So this is all about cognition, how they think, how they perceive different objects. And Azizi will get the chance, that's Azizi back here, he'll get the chance to try two puzzles today. I'm gonna raise this panel, our scientists will show us what those puzzles look like, and then we'll turn the computer to him to participate. Does that sound good? Okay, well, let's get started. So here are those computers, and here's our scientist, Crystal. So you can see on the bottom of the computer facing us, there's a little white circle. This circle is us asking Azizi, the gorilla, to participate. So if he touches that circle, we know that he's willing and ready to participate today. Now the two puzzles that he'll be doing, one is focused all about an object, an image. Raise your hand if you played matching games as a kid, or even now as an adult. Right, those matching games are really fun, they help us learn. We're asking Azizi to match a picture of a flower, the one that shows up first, so this orange flower. When he presses that, two flowers will appear. One is the same one he saw the first time, and the other is blue. So we're asking him to match the first picture of the flower with the second image. And this is gonna help us learn more about how he looks and perceives different objects. Now the second puzzle Azizi will be doing is all about food. You guys like food? Yeah, right? We're mammals, just like the gorillas. We're highly food motivated. We wanna know more about their preferences, their choices when it comes to food. So on the computer today, there's a picture of a carrot and a picture of an apple. So the carrot is the orange one and the apple is a little bit smaller, um, but it is cut into the same shape, the same size. So whichever image Azizi chooses, if he chooses the apple, he'll get a piece of food reward from our scientist Crystal, the same reward that he touched. So this lets us know which food items he prefers when we're comparing them with each other. Now all of this research is voluntary, so Azizi or any of the other apes in here that participate, they never have to. It's voluntary, it's a choice for them, and that helps us maintain a really positive experience around this research. We're not gonna make them do anything they don't want to, nor could we. We always want it to be positive. That goes the same way if Azizi is making a mistake. So with the food preference, there's no mistake. He's just showing us which, showing us which food he prefers, but with that matching puzzle, he can make a mistake. He can press the yellow flower instead of the blue one. And when he does the wrong puzzle, when he does the wrong choice, he hears a different sound. It's called a buzzer. And then he doesn't get the food reward that time, but he always gets the chance to try again. So there's no negative reinforcement. There's just always the opportunity to try over. And look at how patient Crystal is waiting for Azizi to come over. We want to respect him. We want to respect his social structure. That's why we're on this side of the mesh, as well as his size. Azizi is about 400 pounds, so we never go in there with any of the apes that we care for. And Azizi, no, Crystal, is even respecting Azizi's health. So you might notice that she's wearing a mask and gloves when she's delivering those pieces of food rewards. This is to ensure that Azizi stays healthy, because you and I, we are primates too, so we can share the same germs with them. And we always, always want to keep them healthy. All right, so it looks like Azizi is trying that matching puzzle first. So again, he'll see an image of one flower, for instance, the blue one on my tablet here. And then when he presses that flower, two flowers will appear. And we want him to match the first flower that he saw with those dual pictures of flowers. Now, I just have a blue and yellow flower on my tablet to show you what they look like, but Azizi is gonna see upwards of 15 to 20 different flowers when he's doing this matching. So he's not seeing the same color, the same shape at all. We're always mixing those up, so there's a variety with him. And that helps us learn really how he's looking at these objects differently. Azizi, goodness gracious, he's 13 years old. He is still an adolescent, he's not an adult yet, but he's been working with the touchscreen computer since this building opened in about 2005. So he has done a variety of different puzzles and he will continue to do more puzzles because 
because it's really good enrichment. It provides him good mental exercise, which was really important for apes and primates, but it also is helping us learn more about him. So the future puzzles that we do, if we can tell how he is noticing the difference between those symbols, we can gain a bigger understanding of the work that he's doing. So with these flowers, is he noticing the shapes? Is he noticing the lines in the flowers? Or is he noticing the color of the flowers? Because he can't see color just like you and I. We don't know yet, but this puzzle, this match to sample, will hopefully help us learn more. We're really excited about that. So the big benefit for Azizi right now is providing that mental exercise each and every day. But just because Azizi is doing a puzzle today doesn't mean that the other apes in the building don't get a chance. Even the other gorillas in his troop get the chance, but Azizi, he's the head honcho. He's that dominant male in this troop of other boys. And you can even tell by how he's acting. There's some commotion going on, some play between the younger boys, and Azizi is listening and watching. That's his role as the leader. His job is to keep them safe, so any strange noise or strange sound, he's gonna react automatically. And in the wild, in Africa, these bachelor troops, they're meant to protect these young boys after they leave their family and help them learn and grow as individuals. It takes these boys quite some time to grow up to eventually ever be able to be a leader of their own family troop. And if ever they were to get into trouble or be doing something that Azizi doesn't approve of for their safety, he can interact. He can come up and stand on all fours. That's a really good dominant position. Or he can just stare at them. So we can learn a lot about the behaviors that he's doing and the other apes are doing, and that can help us tell the story of their social structure as well. Azizi is a great leader, even as a 13-year-old, and we respect his leadership. So notice, none of the other gorillas are sitting close to Azizi. None of them are coming to try and steal these pieces of food that are really preferred. That's because they respect him, so we respect him as well, and always offer these sessions to him first, before any of the other members of his troop. We also do the same with our family troop of gorillas. So we have an adult male, three adult females, and babies that have been born there. And we always make sure that we're respecting the leader in that troop, which is dad, and then moving to other individuals. Chimpanzees are a little different, so it's kind of a free-for-all when we move over the computer there, because they're all gonna try and participate at the same time. Their social structure is a little different. But every ape in this building has the chance to participate we just have to make sure that we're doing it in a positive way, that we're respect respecting their social structures, and that it helps us learn more about them. Now, as easy can move on, so with this matching puzzle, this is kind of the first draft of the matching puzzle. So right now, he's just matching the flowers, and that can help us learn more about the shape and color. Eventually, those flowers could change, and they could be other objects, which is really important. We also want to give as easy variety in an individual session, not just day to day. So that's why we have him do a couple of puzzles at the same time. And can you guys tell? Do you think he's interested? Yeah, he's sitting this whole time. He's patiently watching the screen. He's working really carefully with the computer. He's really focused, which is a good sign that this is an activity that he really prefers. Now the matching puzzle. Again, it's carrot and apple today. So he's going to finish with this. If you were given a chance between a carrot and an apple, what would you choose? Every time, right? Anyone? Anyone would choose a carrot? Okay. A couple. So that's your preference. We're all humans, right? But individual humans have different preferences. The same goes for gorillas. You know, they're all the same species, but if Azizi prefers an apple, maybe his troop mate Amari, wherever he went, might prefer a carrot. So we want to understand their individual preferences too, because that will help their zookeepers care better for them on an individual basis. Now, I will assume, I'm gonna hypothesize, that Azizi will prefer a, an apple over a carrot. When we did this um, preference puzzle before, Azizi preferred a grape over a carrot. And what do grapes and apples have more of than a carrot? Sugar. Sugar, right? And we prefer sugar. Some of our favorite foods are probably sugar, ice cream. So we want to make sure that they're getting these items that they prefer, but that they're staying healthy. So I cannot eat ice cream every day all day, much to my sadness, and as easy cannot be eating these fruits all day every day. But we can use them as a really highly preferred food item when we ask him to participate in research or when we ask him to participate in daily training sessions where we check on his health and get him ready for vet visits. So we can use those preferences to encourage that participation 
but also make sure that he stays pretty healthy. Azizi is, again, I said about 400 pounds, and we want to make sure that he stays a healthy weight because we don't want him to be too small or too above that average weight. Now Azizi, right now, he's doing carrot and apple, and I think this is his third day trying this carrot and apple. And when he moves on to a different food item, we want to make sure that we've actually seen that he has a preference. So what Crystal will do is she'll check the percentage of how many times he's choosing apple and how many times he's choosing carrot in an individual session. And if that is above, I think, 70%, so if he's choosing apple 70% of the time, then we'll make sure that he gets that three days in a row to move on to a different food group. So he's not just guessing and not caring what his food reward is, he actually has that preference. And this can help us move through a variety of different food preferences because just like you and I, Azizi's kitchen that his keepers pull the food from is a nice variety. So we want to make sure that we are choosing different food items that he prefers and that they're not the same thing every day. So these are the six food preferences that we went through um, in the last couple of months. We're just going to add on to those. So this, again, will help us care better for him training sessions. It gives Azizi that really good mental stimulation. And it really just helps our science department, which is what Crystal works for here, and our animal care department work really well together. These are just a couple of the puzzles that we're doing now, and we've done a vast variety of puzzles to learn more about their social learning, their memory, and that can help us make a big impact on these newborn gorillas. There's something you and I can do every day to care for their counterparts in Africa, though. I will never be a zookeeper, I will never be a scientist like Crystal. I'm a teacher, and I love what I do. But when I'm purchasing groceries or maybe building something or buying paper supplies, I can look for this symbol. It stands for the Forestry Stewardship Council, and these are a team of people who are making sure that lumber in Africa is sustainably harvested. And that's leaving habitats for gorillas and other primates like them that call Africa home. So if you're choosing products with this symbol on it, you are ensuring that you're keeping their habitats healthy and safe in Africa. Our small part that we can care by being a responsible consumer. And with a lot of us working together as a big team, we can actually make a really big difference. So I hope you got the chance to learn a little bit more about that science and animal care. Looks like as easy is done, so Crystal's gonna come out and answer any questions you have about that research. I'll be here too if you have any questions about the, the boys or any other apes in this building, but please enjoy the rest of your visit and thank you so much for visiting Lincoln Park Zoo today. Oh my gosh, perfect time, guys.